what, folks. I'm in 123 feet of water right now. And what I'm doing is catching these fish doodling. Just dropping it down in the schools. And uh, you can see I'm out in the middle of the lake. And uh, it's a nice, beautiful, probably looks like about a two and a half here. There we go. Whoa. These, these are those strong fish. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this one. Beautiful big old bass. Uh-oh, he's coughing up his dinner. Nice big fat healthy bass. Doodlefish. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change rigs. I'm going to get the original Don Ivino doodle rig out. So I watched this show done by the good old boys 30 years ago, right here in the middle of the lake. Don Ivino lives in California. He's the one that came up with this doodle rig. Yes, I'll take a 3 16th sinker, like so. I put it on first. And I always paint my sinkers the color of my baits. In clear water, I think this is important. Because as you can see, if you look at this sinker here that the fish have been chewing on, you can see the teeth marks. Where they hit the sinker and the bead as you're shaking it when you're fishing deep in clear water. And it gives you that little extra edge. You try to get every edge you can when you're fishing. And if it catches me one more fish in a tournament, that's important. I put the sinker on like so. And I use a red bead, eight millimeter glass faceted bead. And you say, wow, why do you use the bead? Well, I use the bead for noise. The click, 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 click. Glass will make a certain noise against lead. So it simulates a crawdad. Plastic will not. So that's the reason for the bead. I use a weapon hook, a one-aught Gary Klein weapon hook. The reason I like this hook, first of all, it's needle point for penetration in deep water because you don't have much of set power down there when you're pulling in 35 to 50. When what you swing up on top is not what's happening down there. It's extremely wide gap for better hook set. I like to tie a double Palomar knot. I'll run the line in once, and then I'll run it back again, and you'll see it'll be doubled, like so. Then we'll make a slight loop. Don't make it real tight, just barely tighten it. Then run it back through the hook, like so. Never pull with the long end. Always pull with the short end, and I'll show you why. We're going to pull now. What happens if you pull with the short end, the line will kind of kink. Well, you don't care about that because you're going to cut that off. So you, the, the straight, the long end will not kink. You'll see it be nice and clean. So that's kind of a little trick to remember. I don't know, maybe you knew how to do that, but a lot of them don't. They always pull with the long end and you'll kink your line. Always pull with the short end. I will put a salt pour worm, a doodle worm, four and a half inch straight. This is what I call my rhythm and blues. <laughs> little r and Yeah, little r and B. Good old boys talk. That's right. <laughs> uh, the, the idea behind the salt pour is not putting salt on a worm. It'll just wash off. My worms have in the back a million little pores in the back. So when your salt washes off, it's like a sponge back there. So when they eat it, it's like scales of a fish. Especially in the winter, they don't let go. This particular worm has probably won more tournaments this year than any worm that I've, that's ever been made. I insert the hook through the flat side of the worm, like so. Always through the flat side. Then turn the hook, 
like so. <clears throat> then I use O40 test monofilament. That's 0 0.040, which is around 80 pound test. And I insert it through the worm into the eye of the hook and out. And you say, well, why do you do that? Well, I'm going to show you. Then you clip it off. When you're in deep water, or any water, when you set, a lot of times you'll notice, I will simulate this for you, you put the worm on, like so, without that, and the fish bites, and you jerk, and you get this. How many times has that happened, folks? Well, when you're in 40 foot of water, you don't want to be reeling that all the way back up to straighten it out. Not only does it pull down, but it acts as a weed guard. So what happens here, when he bites and you swing and miss him, nothing's going to happen. The monofilament will hold it. See how it gives? And that just gives you a few more minutes in the, in the, in the contact zone. And a, during a tournament time, that's really important. If you can gain 10 minutes during the day when you're down there where the fish are, that's important because we're always dealing with time. Great tip, Don. Great tip. Then you Texas rig it. You run it through the side of the worm a couple of times. Don't run it through the middle like this. A lot of people, when they Texas rig, will put it right, right down the, the middle center, of yeah. the worm. Well, when you're in real deep water and you pull, see what happens? you're barely going to get that through. So run it through the side and run it a couple times so you get a nice little track. So when you pull, see what happens? We'll do that again. When you pull, see what happens. If you put it in the center, when you pull, nothing. You're never going to hook it. Oh, really good tip. Well, now we're ready to go fishing, folks. So the idea is is to drop this down, watch your graph, and you could fish anywhere on the lake and catch these fish like this. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna move around. But you can hear this thing clicking with the brass weight red bead. So let's get back to fishing and we'll try to catch some of these. So you just gotta kinda move around. So here's some fish right here in 25 feet of water. Let me see. Trouble is when you see them on the graph, you don't know what they are. They could be carp, they could be, they could be yellow bass, they could be smallmouth bass. You know, all these fish are schooling fish. But the idea is to drop it down. What I like to do is drop it down and to just shake it and then let's let it kind of sit there just to make some noise. So I basically watch my graph now I'm seeing them down 35, 40 feet. So I'm just going to let this drop down. I'm just using a, a spinning reel with Johnny Morris reel, 25, 30 pound braid. And I have a piece of four foot fluorocarbon on there. XPS Bass Pro Shop fluorocarbon. So I'm just going to shake that down there and make some noise. See if I can get a fish. I was using a morning dawn worm, so on the other one, and the worm fell off. But last night I was catching them on these uh, trick worms, and that's what they are. So, so I'm just going to cast back out in the middle of the lake. Doesn't matter which way you cast because you're out, you're out in open water here. So I'm looking at my screen here. And uh, another doodle fish, 123 feet deep. You can see we're out just out here in the middle. Well, I tell you, you think, he, you think they bite on it on a. Uh, On a bait caster, try using one of these little spinning rods, you know. Coming up. Oh, look how pretty they look. Oh, look at that. Way down there. Woo! Nice fish. 
doodle rig fish. Don Avino's invention 30 years ago. Oh boy, look at that, folks. That doodle rig it does work. Not a huge fish, but a nice chunky fish. There he goes. All right. Uh, these clear, bright days like today uh, is really when doodling really pays off. It's the kind of day when it's extremely touch fishing, but the fish will kind of isolate on one pattern, mm -hmm. uh, 35 to 50 feet. And usually once you figure it out, you can catch some fish all day. That's what's so good about doodling, John. It, it's not, there's no magic to it, but when the fish ain't biting, it's a technique that can yes, win sir. you some money in tournaments or catch you some fish for fun. Uh, you know, if they're not biting the back off a crank plug, you better be doing something else. Yeah, something a little different. Yeah, Don, I became a believer in your doodling technique last fall, I mean, last spring at the Fred Hall Boat Show when you were fishing in the hog, uh, you know, hog trough there giving uh, instructions. I saw all the different guys coming along and they were throwing in there giving, you know, they were getting bit. But uh, Don Ivino gets up there and he starts his doodling and every time you threw in to the tank there, bing, bing, those bass were just chasing that thing all over the place. Yeah, I mean, they kind of acted like they knew me, huh? Yeah, we'll show you folks what it exactly looks like. Here's Don at the Fred Hall Boat Show. Okay, watch that thing like somebody threw a crawdad in there. Pop, 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 There he goes. He took it. You see, a lot of times they'll take it before it even hits the bottom because they think it's a crawdad trying to get away. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 Keep bumping that thing and making that noise. And that big one, he wants that sucker. That bead's making that noise just like a crawdad. My worms are as natural as you can get. The fish formula, you got the scent. So you got the three important ingredients. You got scent, you got noise, and you got color. And you put those three together, you can't miss. Oh, there's one right there. Got another fat one on, boy, I'll tell you. Another one on the doodle rig. All right, coming up over here on the side of the boat. Get a good shot of that one in this nice clear water. He's shaking. Look at that. He does not like that hook. Oh, look at all the fish down there, Dave. Can you see that on camera? Check this out. There's about five, six, seven more giant fish. Look at them all. Ah, there are a whole bunch of them down there just circling around this fish. That is so weird. Oh no. Okay, let me get no, there, let's get this one in. Oh. Now that's a that's a nice healthy fish, folks. Oh, oh yeah. Just a nice two, two two, two and a half, somewhere near two, 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 four. Just a beautiful fish. Just swim away nice and pretty for the camera. There you go. And we'll just shake that worm down. Da 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 that's what we needed, the sound effects, Don. We haven't heard there you do that. There it is. There he comes. Right. He's, he's a suspended fish. Yeah, there he comes. Okay, buddy. Let me get out the there way. Here he comes. Hey. Coming up. Coming up. There he comes now. Yeah. A large mouth. Large mouth, folks. Oh, gee. Here we go. Doodle slide. Doodle slide. <laughs> All right, Don. All right. Whoops. Whoa. He was just holding on there. <laughs> yeah, this fish yesterday, folks, would have got me about... Uh, Twenty thousand dollars. That's all I needed to win yesterday. One keeper fish, thirty, one good ranger boat, and I missed it. Yeah, throw him back in there, Don. Maybe well, 
That's, that was a suspended fish, folks, and that fish come about 35 over 50. I'm using my Rhythm and Blues color, salt pour worm. Rhythm and Blues. <laughs> well, John, he, he likes that. He likes that Rhythm and Blues. <laughs> fish are really spooky today. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give them a little bit of fish formula sparkle. When you shake it, the sparkles will come off. I put it on a sinker, the bead and everything, put it in a little plastic bag, and when it gets down there, it'll come off. Throw it out, let's see if we can catch another one. All right. That's 40 feet right there. This is what we're catching right there. All those little marks are all fish. Oh, ooh, big one, three pounds. A little come bit on. bigger. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, man. Listen up my drag. They do bend this pole over, don't they? Man, it's a nice, beautiful. Nice. Probably looks like about a two and a half here. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that, boys. I thought he was a little bit bigger, but. I don't know, I've been seeing all these little parasites on their tongues. See that little little parasite wiggling on my thumb? That was inside his mouth. Nice. Alright, I get a little guy go. Oh, here he goes. Got him. Son of a he got it real fast, real fast. He's still there. It's a doodle fish. Doodle All right. Man. I don't feel like him. Oh, that, oh, there you go. Yeah, that's the way they are, John. They'll come up fast and then start biting. Oh, man. Nice fish, John. All nice right. fish. Lift that boy. Don't Let's grab see. the tip, John. In a boring rod, you'll break it. No, no, don't do that. Oh, OK. Sorry. Yeah. You take it, right. swing it around. Doodling, doodling. Nice fish, Don. Yeah. Where was he yesterday? <laughs> John Murray's spot here. John didn't tell me nothing, that's why. All right, let's see if we can get this fish to go crazy like you got that other one to go. Nah, he didn't do that dance. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Doodlefish. Oh, boy, he's taking me for a ride. He's pulling the boat. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at the size of this one. Man, I think these are fun to catch. Oh, here he comes. That's a good one too, look at that. Beautiful big old bass. When they fight so hard. Oh, Dick down there. He had friends. Come around. See him down there? Let me let him go down. Oh, he's going down to him. Look at them all. His friends are saying, what do you got in your mouth? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, they're all following him around. Check that out. There's two or three down there now. And they're just following him around, seeing what he's got hanging out of his mouth. You can, I can see him. I don't think the camera can see him, but I can. There he is, right behind my, my the fish. It's a big one, too. Another nice one. Oh boy. Now this one's a little bit bigger. This one's pushing three. That's a big fish. Okay. Don Ivino. The doodle rig. Nice fish. Well, game and fish were right. They definitely are making this into a uh, trophy, trophy lake. I'm thinking some of these fish that they stocked in here three, four years ago as 100 pure Florida strain largemouth, some of these we're catching are those fish. All right, baby. Oh, there's one right there. 
Another one. Whoa. Holy mackerel. Come on, baby. Come on up. Boy, I tell you, these things do fight, especially if you get them on a spinning reel. Man, I think I'm in the ocean, you know, trying to hang on with this. Oh, I see leader. Oh, he's, he wasn't that big, but three pounder. Well, that was a quickly lived. Did you get the picture of that on camera? He got it. All right. All right. One more on the doodle rig. It's starting to get pretty windy out here. We got one more on. Took a while to catch this last one. They just aren't biting real good, but not a giant like the other ones, but you know what? It's a doodle fish. Who would ever think watching Don Ivino 30 years ago catch these fish on a doodle rig, come out here and duplicate this again. Not a giant, but it's a bass. You know what? We just got to thank you guys for watching these videos with Dave and I. And with this, we're going to close this out. We're at Roosevelt Lake, mid-May. Doodling Don Alvino style. Yes, doodling Don Alvino style. Now sing the song, just drop the line. And really then, the good old boys, yeah, who can forget the good old boys? All right, thanks again for watching.